Hey, what's up, Average Joe readers? And today, I'm finally bringing you my top 10 sci-fi and fantasy series. So not long ago on one of my videos, somebody commented and was asking what my top series was or was curious if there was a list out there for what mine was. And I hadn't made it yet. I have been waiting to make it because of having enough good series to talk about on my list. Uh, I haven't been an avid reader. I've only been an avid reader for about four years. And uh, even within those uh, years, I read a lot of um, mysteries and thrillers and nonfiction. So, you know, there's still a lot of um, the books that I do read aren't sci-fi or fantasy or series. So uh, I've finally <clears throat> decided to make my list um, it was funny, a couple weeks ago, I posted a picture of me starting to make my list and I already knew what number one was. So if you saw that picture, you already know the spoiler what number one is, but if you don't, then here we go, stick around. So first I gotta say that, you know, if you're liking my videos, please like and subscribe uh, so I can, you know, know that people are liking it and make more videos. And if there are any series that are like really popular series uh, that aren't on my list, if you notice once you get to the end of the list that aren't on it, Stick around to the end and I'll tell you which ones are, aren't, or the, one, the ones that didn't make the cut. And also it's probably because I haven't read them yet. So I'll try and list those after ones. I'll have a couple of ones that missed the cut and ones that I have just haven't read yet that are uh, some of the bigger names in fantasy. So it's funny, I'm gonna mention, you know, not having read a lot um, of fantasy series, I think four books, four of mine on here are ones that I've read or have continued to read this year. And number 10 is one that I'm still working on and could possibly be why it's number 10. And that is The Dresden Files. Dresden is amazing. It is such a cool world. I mean, even though it's technically our world, but it's the, the wizards and the magic and the creatures and everything is so awesome. Uh, the, it's very entertaining with, you know, Harry and Bob, uh, the banter back and forth. Harry and a lot of other people banter back and forth. The fact that it's episodic in nature, but also steadily grows over time for the world and um, the overarching plot is fantastic. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I've actually had to back off some. I think I'm through the first nine books and I'm, I'm kind of slowing down because I know I'll catch up before the books, uh, the books are all finally released because they're only uh, 17 out now and it's going to be like 25 or so. And it's taken, you know, two years or so to release each book or something like that. I don't know. I don't know exactly the, the roadmap for publishing, but Dresden is amazing. It is a lot of fun. And I've so far I've turned on, I think, directly four people, four or five people, uh, my wife and three people that I work with now that have picked it up and say they love it. And the audiobooks are amazing. That's the only way I've consumed them. Narrator, fantastic. He really makes uh, Harry Dresden the character. Number nine is The Great Coats. And while The Great Coats has plenty of flaws, uh, one chapter specifically, uh, book three was kind of wonky uh, and kind of out of left field. There are some flaws with it, but I still remember reading through it and telling my wife so many times of how much I'm enjoying it, of uh, reading in bed and laughing out loud at the banter going on. Uh, it definitely has the here comes the cavalry trope, which sometimes I don't like all the time, but this one, it still does it really well. And sometimes it's executed very smartly versus just blind luck. There's a little bit of both. It's one of those, it's a fun read, uh, very adult, but still very fun and lighthearted. And the fact that it is going to be continued, Sebastian Dickensel is continuing to <clears throat> release books in that world. And the next one is supposed to come out later this year, I think in the fall. Uh, new set of characters, but same world. And there will be... Uh, <clears throat> tie-ins with, uh, with old characters. So Great Coats is amazing. I love it for the for the friendship and the banter and the camaraderie of it. And then there's just the action itself itself is really, really great. The sword play because Sebastian DeCastell himself was a stunt coordinator. So though all those together, it is fantastic. I thoroughly enjoyed it and so did my wife. Number eight is The Broken Empire. And this one is going to be hit or miss for a lot of people, mostly because of Jorg, the main character. He's basically a psychopath. 
<clears throat> to a certain degree. But the more you read into the series, the more you see where he's coming from and what he's been through, what his dad has put him through, what other things have been put, he's been put through and the, the crazy life he's lived. So Jorg is super smart guy. I think he is a, he's an underappreciated protagonist because in the first book, he is pretty much a psychopath uh, to a certain degree. And, but I think I, I really enjoyed having, it was very refreshing to have a, a protagonist like that because there were times we, there are times when you read a book and you go, man, I wish this person would get stabbed in the face. And then three pages later, Jorg would do it for you. So, I, you know, that's great for me. That, uh, or that, 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 that's fantastic to me. And some of the things that he gets, situations that he gets into, you, you think, how the hell is he going to get out of it? But he has a plan and he makes it work. And he's kind of a ends justifies the means a little bit. Um, he's all, he's only worried about his own goal versus his friends and anything. So there's not really any friendship. <clears throat> he is the only character that has much development. I guess you could say there's some other minor ones, the plot and, and the more you learn about him makes the story great. Also, I really like the world. The world is really cool, really smart. And I'm glad that it, the um, Mark Lawrence expanded with the Red Queen's War. So you get more about the world. That one was a decent series. There were ups and downs with it. But I just like that it expanded on the Broken Empire series. And that world, I would like to see more, more from. I really like the world. And it was really smart how, it's, uh, how it was built and how it came to be. I uh, can't say too much else, but that was also a really good point with the Broken Empire. Next one is Ryera Revelations, and or I just say the world, the world of Ryera. And honestly, I'm only like in the tip of the iceberg of this world. I've only read the first four books, which is to me is the first two bindings of the uh, Revelations Omnibus. So I'm on the third one of that. I own the first four Chronicles now, and I own the first three in the uh, Age of Legends or the the Legends series. So three of six of those. I just found out recently that the Legends is 3,000 years before Ryer Revelations. And then he has another trilogy, three other books that are coming out that come in between all of that. So he, he's just, Michael J. Sullivan is just growing this world so big, this uh, Ryer world. And I'm glad that I still have, it's just the tip of the iceberg of not only the world itself, but Royce and Hadrian, which they are the main drawing factor in Ryera. Their camaraderie is fantastic. Their friendship, their partnership, everything about them. Reading those books, that's, I, I read, I'd say that I read the each omnibus together because it's two books. That's because it's just so good. Like, I don't want to put it down. Once I get into the first book, I want to go right into the next one. And it just feels like I'm, I'm stopping halfway, but I'm so into the books and they are, fairly long if you treat them as one book like seven or eight hundred pages <clears throat> but they go quick they're easy smooth reads they are not complicated but they feel fresh and i really really enjoy it it also really helps scratch that um classic fantasy itch because there is there are elves there are dwarves and when he was just talking recently with mike from mike's book reviews is that that's one thing that he wanted to do was bring a world that you're already somewhat familiar with the elements of that, but you can just get right into the story and you learn more as you go, but it's not overly complicated, but it's still smart and clever and fun. And that's why Ryera is awesome. And the fact that I can still have so much more to read could, could waver on, make this, this go up some, but I think it is, it is a really fun read. <laughs> Number six. Now this one is really hard to rank. And I think it's hard to rank for a lot of people. And that's because it's not complete. And at this point, you might be guessing between probably two or three different series. And that is A Song of Ice and Fire. Don't know if it's going to be complete. And that's it. I think that kind of gives it a, a bit of a, a bit of a stink to rate at all and to talk about and to think about. But it is still, even with it without the last book, it is still a very fantastic series. It is very clever. I think I mentioned recently in one of my reads or one of my videos that early on when I was, was pretty new to fantasy reading, it was one of the first series that I actually read. And it's a very heavy series to do that with, which it was kind of crazy, but it was just so good that I got so into it and so into the characters and caring so much about the characters or hating so much of the characters. And it, it definitely made me want to read more books like that. Uh, I think it's also why I like 
um, another series that will be come up on this is, you know, I love having those books with, with, um, each chapter is designated for a certain character. So, you know, you're in their uh, point of view and that they each felt different. So a song of ice fire is fantastic. It's very clever. Obviously I can't wait to the last one if it ever comes out, but it's still going to be on this list. I don't think I can put it in top five because it's not finished and, and whatnot, but it still deserves to be on a top 10. All right, getting into the top five. And the next three books have a similar aspect to them. And that is you're given a world and a story and you start here and you think you know what's going on and then it expands. And then you go, okay, cool. That was cool to find out. And then you, now you know the world and then it expands and then it expands. And like, it's one of those series that grows with you and you don't know when, when, or if it's going to grow more, it's just kind of, it can just kind of happens. And it's not like one of those worlds where it, it starts huge. And then they fill in the gaps. It starts small and then just grows steadily over until you get this big piece. And they, these are the kind of stories that you can probably reread and go, Oh man, all of these pieces of, the, of this larger world were there. And now I'm just seeing them. So number five, silo series, the silo saga, whatever you want to call it. I had a video on why you should read the silo series. And I don't know, maybe it's just cause it's so fresh on my mind, uh, why it's number five, but I still think it's very clever it is a great series. Um, there is, this is uh, technically sci-fi uh, dystopian versus I guess fantasy. I haven't read that many sci-fi to have a separate sci-fi list, but this one is really, really good. So if you want a dystopian, this is really awesome. A lot of secrets to be discovered. Uh, the world grows as you get into it. One awesome aspect is that, you know, it is set in a silo. People are in a nuclear fallout silo. That's like 150 stories deep. And it's one of those where the setting is like a character. The silo is like a character of the story. And that brings another really cool aspect to the whole series and how the entire series and world works. Number four is Mistborn. This also has that same theme about how it grows, but this one, it has to do with the magic system. And if you read the Mistborn magic or the Mist, Mistborn in general, you know, what I, you know what I'm talking about. The magic system just grows and grows and grows and grows and gets more and more complex and deep. And as you go through everything, and you're just like, holy crap, this is crazy how it's doing all this. And that magic system, what he, what Brandon Sanderson built is fantastic. And it's really hard to top. I've really, really enjoyed the, obviously the, the first trilogy. I still also enjoy era two, uh, the wax and Wayne saga, even though wax is kind of like a, a wet blanket. I thought Wayne is awesome and hilarious. Uh, he's can be kind of hit or miss. Nobody really likes wax, but it's, there's still really good characters with it and it still grows the magic system, but still the original trilogy is phenomenal, obviously. And I will continue to read it. Um, whatever comes out after book six, whatever they're at. And yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot to, I need to say about Mistborn because it's going to be on a lot of people's lists of many, many different types of lists. <laughs> All right, number three. This is these next two are almost kind of surprising. And number three, I actually delayed making my list because I was halfway through the second book of this trilogy, and I knew or had a very good assumption that this series was going to make my top ten. So I was like, okay, I'm going to wait till I finish this trilogy so that I could properly rank it because I know it's probably it's most likely going to be in this top ten. And now it's here at number three, and that is Ash and Sand by Richard Nell. I've mentioned this series a few times. It is a newer self-published series. So, I mean, I, I'm not anybody special, but the fact that a debut self-published trilogy is in my top three all time is, I think, speaks volumes of what I think about the series. It is such a smart and clever series. It grows as the series grows. You go through the first book with two main uh, characters, or three, three main characters. And then you kind of get a grasp for them. And then the last 20% of the book, so much happens and craziness. And you're just like, what the hell, how do we get here? What's going to happen? And then the second book fills in those gaps and there's a little bit of time skipping a little bit. So you'll go back like 15 years and then go to the present and then back 15 years, you know, 
but how it all intertwines and adds up. And there's characters in book one that you just think, oh, that's just that's just a whatever character. He's just there to, you know, be abrasive to to cause drama. And then you find out their origin story and why they're there later on in the second book or even the third book. You find out who that person actually was in book one and and the trouble he raised and why it happened to him. You find out in book three, but it happened in book one. And that sort of weaving is fantastic. It is really, really awesome. Really, really smart. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And the <clears throat> he has started the next tr- trilogy in the series or in the, the world called Beyond Ash and Sand. So it's the kind of essentially book four, but it's going to be with new characters, characters you already know. But still, I can't wait to pick up that one. I kind of want to wait till I, I see when the other ones are going to come out because these are books that, while they don't need to be binged, <clears throat> you get to the end of just the way that I know the first trilogy worked is that when you get to the end of the book, you, you're really curious and like wondering how the heck some things are going to happen or how they got here. And you want to go right into the next one. So Ash and Sand, I really, really highly recommend it. And Kindle Unlimited, it is still on Kindle Unlimited. It also just went on sale the other day because the uh, fourth book, the, the new book in the series came out. So Ash and Sand, 100%, if you're getting a Kindle Unlimited, read this series. <music> Time for number two. This one, I'm kind of surprised it got this high. I knew it was going to be up there. Uh, I knew it was going to be highly ranked, at least top five, probably. And so when, when I went to do my rankings for these, I actually did my took my rating system, my, my own rating systems that I've used, which I've shown on some of my reviews. And I put those rating numbers, about my value toward all of these. And the value came out. And then I was just comparing from there which one I, I thought I would enjoy or rank more higher. And so number two is Red Rising. I've only read the first trilogy in Red Rising. I haven't gone on to Iron Gold or Dark Age yet because book six doesn't seem to be anywhere near in sight. And I, I want to wait until there's actually like a release date to read it up until then. So I'm taking a break now after Morningstar, but fantastic series. I think the, the characters really help make it. The plot is super smart. Anytime... I thought I knew what was going to happen, which way we we're going. There was a curveball, and then it's like, okay, cool. Maybe this will happen. And then another curveball, and another curveball. So I was always on my toes and kept guessing. There were definitely times where there were frustrating moments, there were cheering moments, there were great moments, sad moments, happy moments, all of those. The characters that are supporting Darrow are fantastic. I also love how him as a protagonist is, you know, sometimes you get these protagonists that. They're amazing at something. They're amazing at everything. They're just the best at whatever they do. Darrow's kind of like second best at everything. He's not the best at everything. He's sometimes second or third best at everything. But the, the fact that he's the, like that and that he just has that the, a different kind of mindset than everybody else really makes it awesome and um, helps him succeed. His friends are great. You really start to care about some of them as well. Enemies become friends. Friends become enemies, blah, blah, blah. It is fantastic. It has both a sci-fi and fantasy and dystopian feel all at once. So it has a a lot that I think almost anybody can like and do and uh, um, enjoy. And then the number one should not be that much of a surprise of how I've talked about it in the past or if you've ever interacted with me on outside of here. Uh, Faithful in the Fallen. 100%. 100%. John Gwynn is amazing. That series is amazing. Uh, backstory on this is I discovered it in 2018. Uh, there was a Barnes & Noble that we would always go to before we went to the movies. It was right next door, so we'd go there, look at books, and go to the movies. And I saw those books, and it was just when I was getting started reading. And they always intimidated me because they are thick, thick books, but they looked amazing. But it was always on my radar. So I made a goal in 2019 to read those, to, me, to challenge myself to read the thicker books. And they went by fast. And yeah, I absolutely love them. So I read this back in 2019 before it got like really, really big and, and exploded across BookTube. And then last year I read The A Blood and Blown, A Bone, which is the trilogy afterwards, which those seven books I think is honestly part of the entire, um, it's, it's almost like you can treat it as one series. There's just like a hundred year intermission. But Faithful and Fallen specifically, absolutely amazing. Love the characters, love the plots. 
the twists, the turns. My wife is reading it now. She's on to Valor and she's really enjoying it. Although it's, it's funny when she's reading it, um, she'll get frustrated like toward the end when all like, well, I can't really say, I can't even say too much because like when people die, she's just like, what the hell? And throws her arms up and gets frustrated, but she's still really liking it. So, you know, the, the emotions happen with Faithful and the Fallen. It's, it's the ultimate roller coaster. There's lots of highs and lows and uh, yeah, the battles and the, the, everything about it is phenomenal, amazing. I absolutely love Faithful and the Fallen. I've tried to preach it to as many people as I can. Um, I try and dial back on it now, especially on here, because it has gotten grown in such popularity and, and John Gwynn books. But I was definitely there 2019 talk, telling people that they need to read Faithful and the Fallen. I got a coworker to read it. He loved it, absolutely loved it. So yeah, that is my number one. And I don't see that moving. I don't see, I don't know what would take take over that. It would have to be something new and amazing. I'm pretty sure it's just going to be secure there at number one. So that was my top 10. There were three other series that I wrote down that were in contention. And I was going through my Goodreads to try and pick out which other ones could fit. So the first one that I'm going to say is probably one that people are wondering why it wasn't on the list or if it was going to make the list. And that's First Law Trilogy. That one was really on, on the cusp. I was debating between First Law and Dresden, but ultimately, I honestly think I, I enjoy Dresden more. And I've had my issues with First Law. I've said this on a few different times. Um, one of, I still think one of the characters, one of the POVs is absolutely pointless. Um, it was also one of those things where, I, you know, I rank these books based on pure enjoyment of when I read them. And the level of hype that First Law had, I just didn't meet my hype or expectations. So my enjoyment was kind of lower than it might have been. Now, I've only read the first three. I will still read the standalones, which haven't gotten much hype and have, if anything, gotten mixed reviews. So those I might start to, they might make me like the world even more and I could, uh, it, it could get bumped into the 10, who knows. Next one was Night, Night Ender Trilogy. I remember loving this years ago. I read this back in like 2014 and I, I know it was on my high on my list for a very long time, but I can't remember anything about it really. I know the assassin stuff. I know people... Uh, have read it since and have kind of not liked a lot about it. I, I I know I still loved it, but I'd have to go back and read it to actually properly rank because I can't even I couldn't even do my rating system because I couldn't think of of any all the specifics of the book because it's been so long. And I rarely I never reread books, so I don't know if I'll ever go back and reread it. I know it was fairly long. We'll see. I don't know if I feel like I need to or if it'll just tarnish my views of it because i remember loving it but we'll see and the last one was scythe i love arc to the scythe it was a lot it was a very fun read um on the ya side but it was still very very enjoyable uh, i just all right any other series that like big name series that didn't make the list or even in contention it's probably because i haven't read them and to read those off lord of the rings yep i have not read that yet stormlight Lightbringer, which I don't think it's on many people's high list. I started book one and I DNF that one twice. Um, Wheel of Time, Malazan, anything by Robin Hobb, I haven't delved into yet. Anthony Ryan, I'm not sure what else, you know, any other of those like trilogies, you know, Senlin, um, Poppy War, any of those I have not read yet. I just started Black Company, so we'll see how that goes. Like, I'm not even through the first chapter. So those are the ones that I have not read yet, and that's why they're not on here. So let me know what you think about my list. Whether, were there any surprises on my list that either you wouldn't have on your list or would? Um, agrees, disagrees, just thoughts, overall thoughts on what you think of my list. And we can chat about more in the comments. I am excited that I got this out, but now I can do this every year and I can see how they change year to year. And eventually I would like to be able to split sci-fi and fantasy. You know, I might at first do like a top five sci-fi and keep it at top 10 fantasy. So that might take Red Rising and Silo out of my top five here. So that could bump some up. We'll see what happens uh, as I do want to read more sci-fi, but most of the sci-fi I read are either standalones or Star Wars. And I can't really put Star Wars as a series on here because it's so many different authors and it's just fun to be in Star Wars. Um, so that's what's going on with that. Uh, yeah, so let me know what your thoughts are, and we can chat about it more in the comments.